Hello, Michael. How you doing? Lino, I'm ready for Thanksgiving. I can see that. Can you buddy. tell? <laughs> now, I don't want to like force it. Like, there is one for you if you I want. I can't use it for three seconds. For three seconds? Okay, it's oh, going to be the good three seconds of the show. Ready for Thanksgiving. We'll probably have a show before Thanksgiving, actually, because we're Yeah, Wednesday, next Wednesday. Yeah. I'm just kind of preempting it. I'm going to put um, them here. How about that? That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, is... Michael, um, well, before we go to our show, uh, yes. we, I just came back from Selma, Alabama. You from did. Don't the, mind me. I'm just... The uh, Edmund Ministries down there, oh. and... Uh, the lights are off. Uh, okay. I'm going to put that down now. But you, you were in to, Selma. It was yeah, great. I have to say that we celebrated the 80th anniversary of the Edmund Night Missions. Wow. It was a great uh, celebration. The Bishop of the Archbishop of Mobile was there. Mm. We had a great mass. Uh, Father Steve did a great homily. We had a great dinner. Wow. And uh, A great time. As it, was, it, it was awesome. And um, it looks great. It, it feels good mm -hmm. and it, it feels good to be home though yeah i can understand that feeling yeah and uh as you can see michael and i today are wearing sweatshirts and, and coats it's a so little yeah i didn't take it off the, before the it's the a, cold is here it's, yeah <laughs> it's getting to be fall i was hoping it wouldn't happen this year but <laughs> lino and i it's strange because lino is from venezuela yep. and i'm from vermont and Lino loves the, the snow and playing in the snow, and I hate it and don't. Well, hates a strong. I strongly dislike it, and so go figure. Yeah. But uh, here we are. So Michael, today you know, uh, we agreed to talk tomorrow, November sixteenth. Oh, that's a big day for us. It's a big day for us, the Edmonton community. Today, the church celebrates the feast day of Saint Edmund of mm -hmm. Canterbury. And if you put two and two together, Edmund Day and Saint mm -hmm. Edmund kind of sounds familiar. <laughs> oh, Lino! I just now got that. No kidding. Who knew? Who knew? That's amazing. So tomorrow uh, we will be celebrate the, the the life of our, uh, patron, our patron saint, the primary patron saint. So Edmund. I thought we today talk about Saint Edmund, his life, what he did, what he that didn't do. That sounds like a great idea. So I don't know if you want to start us off. But yeah, let's maybe set the stage a little bit because Saint Edmund was. Let me interrupt you oh. a second. Michael is a his history buff. Yeah, I guess so. So yeah. uh, that's why I gave the historic part to him because oh. I know I, he will do a better job than I would. Well, I don't know about that. I'll I'll be honest. There's um, I I don't know nearly as much about Saint Edmund as some of our colleagues and confreres do. Um, but I think it's important to at least get a sense of the time period about yep. when this was all going on. So. St. Edmund was a person that lived during the, the Middle Ages, okay? Mm -hmm. So the um, period of history where there was a particular social and cultural role that the Catholic Church had in the Western world um, in a particular way. Um, I feel like I'm already getting too academic here, so I'm going to try to bring <laughs> it down. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to boil it down a little bit here. Um, but it is important to know that he was somebody from the Middle Ages. The Society of St. Edmund was not founded in the Middle Ages. We'll talk about that. Um, but he was a creature of his time in the Middle Ages. And um, I don't know how far back you want to go to his childhood or to... Well, I don't think we know much about his childhood. We don't but, really, um, so that'd be tough to talk with too much. Uh, um, only that he was born in between the 12th and the 13th century. Yeah, in a uh, place called Abingdon in England. Abingdon in England. Uh, he was... Um, it seems that he came from a, a well-off, or at least a middle, what we call a middle-class family. Yeah. But, uh, his dad was uh, most likely a um, uh, merchant. Mm -hmm. So maybe not well-off, but with enough um, money to live a, a, an easy life. Right, of, you know, relative to that time. So that it wasn't yeah. a family of kind of peasant farmers or anything like that. They, they were of enough means to have some opportunities in the world. I've heard... Edmund referred to sometimes as Edmund Rich, R-I-C-H, yeah. um, and I've heard debating things that say, well, that's a mark of his status on the one hand, or maybe it was just like a last name sort of thing on the other hand. Yep. Other people could yep. say more about that than I. So perhaps. in his early life, he dedicated, he went to study in Paris. Mm -hmm. He, uh, I... Paris I, was like the place to go yeah, to study Paris theology. Before the university was created, or, or the, the beginnings of the university. Uh, yeah, like this is this whole era that we're talking about, what we think of now as 
the university yep. system. Like this whole mentality mindset was was being yep. formed. Um, so and uh, he studied there the liberal arts, mm -hmm. the Tribune and the Quadribune. Mm -hmm. And after he studied there, he went back to Oxford. He did in England and uh, to teach the young men of his time. And before we, or I know we're jumping around all over the place, bit, yeah. but I, but I just th things are catching my mind and making me interested. When we talk about these <coughs> things, the liberal arts, um, I think that might be of interest to people because you know St. Michael's, where we're at right now, is a liberal arts institution. So like, this was something that was coming of age in the Middle Ages. This notion of to have um, of a true understanding of reality, of God, of our Creator, and mm -hmm of that aspect of reality, having a knowledge of the world around us can only help. So in learning science and learning philosophy and learning astronomy um, and learning history and language, you know, uh, all of these things were pieces of God's creation and could help shed shed light on, on God and yep. who God is in our relationship to God. And in a particular way, that's sort of what we do still at St. Michael's College, where students, you know, are required to take many different courses in different fields, even if it's not their major, um, because there's a hope that in having a holistic knowledge of things, you know more about yourself and know more about the world around you. Um, and so, um, it's interesting. One of the fields that, for whatever reason, it seems like Edmund had some connection to a facility for was actually geometry, right? Yep. A form of mathematics. Yep. Um, that's when. The, the the dream came mm -hmm. to his mind. Uh, he dreamt of his mother asking him to study the, the figure that he's dream and he's the figure he dreamt with was three circles mm -hmm. that um, touch each other, giving the the uh, the idea of the Trinity. So with that revelation, Edmund went went back to. Uh, Paris, mm -hmm. the school of Paris, to do and now his studies in theology right. to become a priest, um, and then after that he he went to a parish in Caen, mm -hmm. if I remember correctly. He was a pastor there, and also he was named the um, the treasurer in Salisbury, mm -hmm. the cathedral of Salisbury, when the cathedral was being uh, built. Although uh, I was reading recently about his life because I'm. The preacher tomorrow in our feast day, the main plug celebrant. right there. Uh, but the, the idea is that um, it seems that he was treasure not as much as the construction goes, but the treasury he was the treasure he was concerned with was was the um, the vessels and the stuff yep. used in the liturgy. Yep, and that, that's true. I think to a certain extent, this day to this day, if you go to some of the grand cathedrals in Europe, like I know. Um, Father Marcel, Rainville, and I, maybe mm -hmm. you've been there too, but we went to a city in France called Sens. Did you mm -hmm. ever go there? Yep. And there's like a cathedral treasury there that has sort of sacred stuff. And what's cool about that is it actually has stuff that belonged to St. Edmund. So it has his, his mitre, his bishop's hat, some of his shoes and things like that. But you're right, during the Middle Ages at least, um, the cathedral treasurer was in charge of the, the physical accoutrements or instruments or however you want to term them that were necessary for the cathedral to do its business so you know chalices and perhaps relics um you know big and medieval uh spirituality things of that nature so he was kind of the the caretaker for those items yep and then because the job he did there uh he was named bishop mm -hmm. and he made it to be the bishop of canterbury mm -hmm. which, which for the, the english church that's the highest position yeah. that you could have yeah and so edmund um it seems for what I read that he had a sort of like a monastic um, mm -hmm. vocation. Yep. He loved the monastic life, and actually, the the book he he the, the treatise that he wrote, the the Mirror of the Church. Mm -hmm. It's Matthew Paris, who's his biographer, talks about that is almost like a textbook for monastic life sure. and how to live monastic life. Mm -hmm. So it seems that Edmund had that tendency, and also one thing that I read about Edmund, I think. Two things I read about him that mm -hmm. had to um, that impressed me as I was preparing for my homily tomorrow is that once that when he decided to be a teacher, mm -hmm. he also was debating to be a, a, a monk mm -hmm. or live monastic life. But he thought that being a teacher was a, a good Christian vocation and as good as being a monk. Mm -hmm. So I think that for us, the work in a uh, college institution yeah. is a good example. And the other point would be like um, that Matthew Perry said that maybe he was not a great administrator, uh, 
but he was good at uh, ministering and fulfilling the needs mm -hmm. of those who went to him. Matthew Perry said, anyone that knocked at his door had a roof and a warm meal to eat that mm -hmm. night. So I think that um, as we as an Edmundites, that's one of our Edmundite charismas mm -hmm. and one of the Edmundites hospitality. hospitality that anyone that comes to us, we, we make sure that that person will have a roof and a, and a hot meal. Yeah, and just hearing you articulate some of this stuff as well, some of which I've thought about before too, um, I don't think this was necessarily a uh, intentional connection when the Edmundites were founded, but it's interesting how in the way that we Edmundites live our lives, there's a little bit of that balance there. So we're, we're not monastic strictly because we don't have, you know, that same lifestyle that people that are actual monks do, but we do have the tradition of living in common and praying mm -hmm. in common, um, and community life is very important for being an Edmundite, so that's maybe monastic after a fashion, but we're also called uh, as part of our charism to be out and present in the world, be it in teaching or campus ministry or parish work or whatever it is. Um, so we, you know, we let ourselves be known. We're at the service of the community, but we also have time to come together for, for prayer and reflection. Yeah. So maybe coincidentally, but there's a little bit of the balance in the lives that we lead mm -hmm. that maybe Edmund had in his life as well. Well, and then Edmund in a trip to, to Rome, mm -hmm. so you go the Pope, when he was in France, he fell ill. Yep. And he passed away. Actually, I know if you had the opportunity, but in the trip that I, when I went to France to trace the, the mm -hmm. steps of the Society of Edmund and Edmund himself, I had the opportunity to be in the place he died. There's a chapel there. Yeah, it's a little town called Soissy. Soissy. Um, yeah. I, I actually have not had the chance to go there, but I. Have so heard I, about it was it was great to see the place mm -hmm. uh, where Edmund died. So and after he died, um, the monks at the Pontigny Abbey, mm -hmm. which is an abbey which is still standing in France. S still looking good. And uh, where Edmund actually is entombed on top of the altar mm -hmm. of that abbey church. These monks knew about Edmund because Edmund used to he had spend a lot of yeah, time He had stayed there monks. before. Because again, that monastic kind of mm -hmm. idea, even though he wasn't a monk, he, right, he, he enjoyed monks. living the life of a monk. So these monks kind of were the ones that moved everything to make Edmund a saint mm -hmm. and they moved everything to get him to be entombed in what it was his their abbey church mm -hmm. um, so um, and I think you and I had the opportunity to go see the, the abbey church uh, at Pontigny yep I've visited it um, I've, I've been to France twice in my life, and both times, kind of the centerpiece was um, visitations to Pontigny Abbey. Um, I don't know if you've had this experience, but one thing I thought was very cool is that when I was there, um, uh, there was a, the, the local area priest said mass at the oh, Abbey, nice. which is oh, very I cool. So, so I can say that I've at least been been to. I've not celebrated mass there, but I've been to mass there, which is very cool. One of the things that impressed me of the Abbey Church is that um, this is a, as a Cistercian Abbey. Mm -hmm. So when you get in. You see the um, the abbey is all painted white. Mm -hmm. The uh, the windows are all transparent, so there's no stained glass. Right, there's no uh, so it's a color. very yeah, it's a very uh, modest um, kind of austere austere. That was the word I was looking for. Thank you. Austere. You're welcome. Because that was the way that Cistercians did. I mean, the idea was to, to put the emphasis on God, and God was the center, so not in the ornamentation of the church. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting that as you walked into the church and you see this, and when you get to the tomb of Saint Edmund, mm -hmm. you see this tomb which is very ornate. Yeah. Yeah, and, it's got and, these and angels and holding it up. Angels and, holding it up. Mm -hmm. So it's that contrast and maybe that um, devotion to St. Edmund mm -hmm. that these uh, monks had. So I, I, for me, that was a, a good yeah. uh, a way to, to um, almost like tongue. this is a very important man that is sure. being here. So I, I found it really interesting. And this is just a silly thought that popped into my mind, but I, I can imagine. <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't even say this, but I can imagine, you know, if, if some of our brothers watch this and we, we welcome all feedback in terms of maybe if we were not accurate 100 percent about certain things, that's Which that's totally fine. But it, <laughs> but for folks that are watching, you know, if your curiosity has been piqued by this, you know, definitely um, look into it more, you know, ask Lino or myself or any other Edmundite if you want to have some resources to study about. Edmund, because I think he's a very fascinating figure. One thing I do want to touch on a little bit too, this was going back to when Edmund was um, Archbishop of Canterbury, so when he was in England. Um, 
I, I mentioned this because once upon a time there was a, a fellow from another diocese in this country that reached out to me because he wanted a, a relic of St. Edmund because he was curious about or, or inspired by some of the interactions that Edmund had with the King of England at that mm -hmm. time because they had a lot of disagreements politically about a variety of different things but Edmund was willing to stand his ground and sort of stand up to the king and the person uh, that contacted me was inspired sort of by that and wanted a relic of St. Edmund to sort of commemorate that and so I arranged or got in contact with the Superior General, Father Hornat, who then did send a relic to this guy. But it was interesting because outside of sort of the Society St. Edmund world or the places where we have our ministries, in all honesty, I don't know if Edmund is that well known of yep. a saint. So it's always kind of interesting when people kind of make a connection or find something or what aspects of his life is inspiring to them. Um, so for some of his political stuff apparently has been inspiring to people. So there you go. Yeah. So now to segue into other oh. thing like well we talked that Edmund was between the 12th and the 13th right. century right and we are in our celebration of the society of mm -hmm. 175th anniversary that's true so how did that happen yeah what <laughs> happened in the interim that's kind of a long stretch I think I I don't know if it's a common misconception, but if it is a misconception, um, the Society of St. Edmund was not founded oh, by St. Yeah. Edmund. He died long before we were ever dreamed of. Yeah. Um, but what did happen was that after um, the French Revolution in the 1780s and 90s, um, there was a lot of chaos in France and in the Church of France in particular, and the great monastic holdings and the great monasteries were sort of suppressed or liquidated or whatever you want to term it. So the big community that was around Pontigny Abbey, this abbey where uh, Edmund was buried, everything was destroyed, laid into ruin, the monks were expelled, the only thing that was left was the abbey church itself where Edmund was buried, and even that started to fall into disrepair. Um, but as people in that region were sort of losing their faith and losing touch with the church and losing touch with a lot of different things. There was a, uh, a group of men, or in particular an individual by the name of Jean-Baptiste Mouard, who we would consider the founder of the, Socii of the Society of St. Edmund, who had this idea to be sort of missionary priests, but within the country that they yeah, within were the from, within their own diocese. And so they wanted to do parish missions they wanted to through their preaching and through teaching kind of restore the faith of this place that had been you know traditionally catholic but had lost its connection to the church for a variety of different reasons and once upon a time as this small group of people gathered a handful of followers they um, contacted the uh, the bishop of of the diocese you know the head of the church in that region and they said you know if nobody else is using it essentially we would like to kind of have you know, the, Ad yeah. the Abbey of Pontigny is our headquarters um, as we have a place to stay and operate and, and to do some of our work. And that was okayed, um, you know, for lack of a better term. And because St. Edmund is buried there, um, they took on this saint as one of one of their patrons. Yeah. Uh, we weren't initially known as the Society of St. Edmund, but we always had that connection through uh, Pontigny Abbey of, of having him as one of our patrons. Um, so kind of an interesting connection uh, there. And, you know, there's more backstory to who this guy Jean-Baptiste Mouard was and kind of the foundational stuff of the of, of the Edmundites or what would become the Edmundites. Um, but that's sort of the connection with, with the Abbey Church yep. and with St. Edmund. Yeah, and because uh, it was more coincidence than... Or yeah, but, and, and that's not to say negatively. A lot of oh, yeah. good things come out of coincidence. And, I, and actually, we didn't adopt the name of St. Edmund at the very beginning. No. Uh, the, the these guys were called many names. Mm -hmm. The first names were given was the auxiliary priests, right? Because the idea was that they would, as Michael was saying, revitalize mm -hmm. the uh, the Christian or the Catholic yeah. tradition in, in their diocese. Um, and then when we became a religious order of pontifical right, Which uh, basically means that the Pope recognizes that yeah, we exist and, and we can well, and, and it means that we can do our work in different right uh, right we're not tied to one diocese. diocese uh so we were named something similar to the oblates of the sacred heart of, of jesus, jesus and, and the immaculate, immaculate heart of mary. mary so if you see that 
Society of St. Edmund, which is our current name, is only SSE. Can yep. you imagine how many letters we have? A little bit of alphabet soup. And <laughs> don't don't quote me on this, but one of our brothers, I think, was saying that the name Society of St. Edmund didn't become the official name until like until the, the, the 70s. 70s. Like, so yeah. it's been pretty recent that pretty recent. we're called yeah, SSE. There was also one time uh, there were the old blades of... Uh, so God of Jesus and my God of Mary, priest of Saint Edmund. Or yeah, so like, that. Yeah, like this could go on and on, yeah. right? Because yeah. actually, uh, one of the the first ministries we had as a religious community was the um, we we were asked to take care of uh, Le Mans Saint Michel mm-hmm. uh, up in France because one of the guys who started this group that he left later he became uh, uh, a bishop there a bishop in that diocese uh, Father Brabard or uh, Bishop Brabard I mm-hmm. guess and uh, he asked us you know, because he knew us that to take care and he knew the great job the mm-hmm. guys were doing at Pontigny they asked us to go to Le Mans Saint Michel and when I visit Le Mans Saint Michel there is a plaque in one of the chapels that recognizes Le Pères of Saint Edmund, mm-hmm. uh, the priest of Saint Edmund. That's very cool. So, uh, so yeah, we have have many names in our life, but also for the same coincidence related to Saint Edmund and to sure to this uh, 13th century man that. Uh, hmm. Now, Lino. Yes, sir. Mont Saint Michel. In English, that would be, you know, the mountain of St. Michael. Yeah. Are there any other institutions in Edmundite history that have been named after St. Michael? Well, there's a school in France. Okay. And St. Michael's College. Really? Oh, yeah. wow. It's almost like that's a... Coincidence, right? <laughs> it's almost like that's meant to be. Yeah, Very so cool. Edmund and, and Michael were devotions that um, were sure. introduced in the society as I said, maybe as a coincidence. Yeah. But they've stuck to us. <laughs> yeah, and for students or other people that know St. Michael's College campus, it's interesting how, you know, some of the residence halls, there's one that's called, you know, Pontigny Pont- Hall, named after Pontigny Abbey, where St. Edmund was buried. There's one called Canterbury Hall, you know, St. Edmund was Archbishop of Canterbury. So usually there's a reason why things get these names, and it's kind of. Yeah, it's cool. not random. It's not random. So there's kind of <laughs> connections there, which are fascinating if you're into that sort of stuff. And now we're talking about the buildings, but Alley Hall, where we are right now, is uh-huh. because of Father Alley, one yep. of the French uh, priests mm-hmm. that came here to the United yep. States. Yep. Uh, and some of the other buildings on campus, but well, they bear the names of Edmundites. So. Yeah, it's kind of cool. It is Interesting cool. stuff. Now, Lino, just to put in a... Another question. Oh, my God. Well, it's not a question so much, but maybe a, <laughs> uh, a, a plug, perhaps. They'll sure. do it in the form of a question. So if people are thinking, wow, I'm really fascinated by St. Edmunds. Um, I would love to have maybe like a special moment of worship that we can focus on St. Edmund or maybe, you know, would it be possible to like maybe have a mass in St. Edmund's honor? Do you know anything about this? Well, Michael, as we said at the beginning, tomorrow, November oh, 16th, tomorrow. is the feast day of St. Edmund. Is it? <coughs> so That's exciting. For us, Edmund Day is a huge day. Yep. Uh, it, I think it's the most important day liturgically for us because it's it's the day we celebrate the life of our patron saint. Mm-hmm. So, I know if for a fact that uh, here at St. Michael's College, and because the majority of our DMDI community lives here on campus, right. the northern community, uh, we will have our St. Edmund's Day mm-hmm. uh, Mass tomorrow at 4.30 p.m. 4.30, mark your calendar. Uh, if you have fun watching this show, you might have fun tomorrow in my homily. I hey, know, I'm the who main, knows? I was asked gonna be to be the man of the moment right here. Be the main celebrant tomorrow and uh, be the preacher. We love this guy. Which is... Uh, uh, as I was preparing my homily, I feel honored and humbled by this, especially because, as you said before, some of our brothers know the story and the history of St. Edmund yeah, better, better than, than we, we do. do. Uh, <laughs> We're learning. Been, We're trying. They have been in one for longer than we have. and uh, We want that young blood, though. Yeah. Fresh being, face. Being Look at asked this guy. to do the Mass, it was for me like, oh, I, I actually asked Dave through our superior general, uh, superior general, superior of the house, when he asked me if I wanted to be the main son, I said, are you, are you sure? Mm-hmm. <laughs> are you really want me to do this? And he, when he said, yes, I, I am sure. So, okay, sure, I will yeah. do it. <laughs> it's a great opportunity. I think it'll be fun. I'm certainly looking forward to it. Um, there's some other little things happening on campus tomorrow, too. Are, are, are we doing the... Uh, um, anything else on campus? Yeah, uh, so in order to celebrate uh, the feast of our patron, um, 
lunch tomorrow at the dining mm-hmm. hall will be for free. On the house. On the Woo! house. And uh, Save you your will receive a nice uh, water bottle. With it actually the, uh, is kind of nice. Like it, With the society you said in yeah, logo. I won't editorialize, but uh, of the gifts for events like this that I've seen, this is maybe probably the nicest. It's a, yeah. it's a, it's a legit water bottle. So yeah, if you're so thirsty, you can put liquid in it and consume it, and it's yep. great. And if you cannot be Performs here its function. With tom- tomorrow with us, uh, take a moment tomorrow and, and say a prayer for... Yeah, it's bare thought. Uh, for the inmates mm-hmm. that bear the name of the saint of tomorrow because uh, goodness knows that. Lino and I need oh, your prayers dear God <laughs> you have no idea how much <laughs> oh, and uh, boy. say a prayer for us the inmates say a prayer especially for vocations yes that we're we, always looking for new Edmundites to that, share our work with and yeah, that we get spend our life with it'll be good wacky man like Michael and I man. mean you know it takes all <laughs> kinds and I think a sense of humor is important oh no definitely so yeah that's we wanted to share with you today uh, the life of St. Edmund or a little bit of who was Edmund was yeah, just a little bit of background uh, and how we came to bear his name even though he lived a few a few years before us a little bit yeah because uh, one of the things I always say is like the Jesuits have St. Ignatius where right. they found it the Franciscans but right St. Francis. Francis and the Dominicans St. Dominic Tom. but when we said Edmund we said no 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 he didn't find yeah it. not St. Edmund so <laughs> logical mistake to make but no yeah so so in any case Michael if you have anything else to to say uh, I think that does it for Edmund. me I mean, uh, if, I, if you thought our Thanksgiving stuff was exciting this time around, yeah. the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. I'm not going to put wow. mine on again, but... Uh, uh, you, just, lost, you lost a feather. I, I did. Oh, just boy. to remind you that... Um, to subscribe. Yes. To like or dislike yes. if you don't like it. Um, and uh, we will see you next week. Yes, indeed. Thank you. Have uh, a great day. Oh. Ah. Uh. <laughs>